Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing uh, the dreaded Rise of the Robots run. I am having some PC issues guys. Uh, the blue screens continue and that uh, really is disheartening. Spend a lot of time to fix it. Hopefully today it will work. So without further ado, why is the supply rate so important? It will give us access to... Uh, uh, Alarium and alien alloys so that's definitely what we would need <clears throat> and with the supply run we also although it's a difficult mission will have the opportunity to sort of uh, make sure that we get that resource boost which we currently need so let's try to get really the best items and weapons on all of our soldiers we got Hakbite with his mind shield there is no question that that is going to be important we got xus 6 and we're giving him the old uh, world assault rifle for that little aim bonus we do have uh, an assault rifle with a repeater and this here is an autoloader assault rifle just out of curiosity if we were to upgrade it do we have something else well we do have a stock and i tell you what i will prefer the stock over the autoloader and the reason is this will give us a lot of tactical depth for dealing an extra point of damage here and there so that's definitely a huge advantage having it a secured one damage from time to time can just make encounters so much more easy when you are having an encounter where someone's kind of behind full cover once we get into the mission i'll talk also a little bit about the build order because i've thought a bit about that let's uh, jump right into the mission first all right we are about to land so everybody on board And XCOM has just landed. So, I wanted to talk a bit about uh, the build order, but beforehand, this here seems to be a smash and grab operation. Let me shortly explain the idea behind it. As long as we stay in concealment, which we will try to do as long as possible, we should be fine. It's a pretty large uh, and sizable map, but we started relatively close to the actual. Uh, uh, to the actual target so whilst i am going to move ever so closer to our target let me maybe talk about the build order a bit so i was thinking and reflecting as always about what could have been done a bit better uh, what hasn't worked as intended and really the one thing uh, that struck my mind is i still very much like the um, laboratory rush that we have taken but at the same time i feel that the resistance ring that we built so early really didn't give us enough value and the reason why i am con uh, convinced that maybe a gts would have been the better choice is predominantly all right, so it's just out of sight of uh, vision range. Predominantly, the uh, resistance ring is a fantastic building if you want to do a lot of covered ops missions right off the bat. And yeah, for, for that, it is really good. Unfortunately, with only rookies, that use case is significantly diminished, so to speak. So I feel we're not really getting the same value out of it if that makes sense mainly because we're only having rookies and there's basically one or two missions that we can do and that's pretty much it and that's not good enough for a starter building specifically since we could have taken different buildings to begin with moving up everybody is still on high ground by thinking about it maybe we don't want everybody to be on high ground maybe we want one person being able to snatch that crate because that's what's going to happen very soon true rebel will be that one person
double stun lancer plus a normal <coughs> trooper that's a pretty tough pack all right true rebel is going in there's wow there's yet another pack okay cool so what I suggest we would do is we're letting the one patrol just mind their own business moving as far away of uh, from them as po as humanly possible and at the same time we're just going to move up here We're not going to mark the uh, crate, not necessary. But we got to deal with the three of them here. Wow, now we're in an interesting spot where I would like to go for that pack, but the second pack is a continuous threat in my perspective. So. Despite what I said earlier, we'll still stick with that. One movement away from the crate, but we got to deal with that pack first. It's almost like this gigantic ball of um, uh, of yarn. And you're trying to unravel it without breaking anything. You got to start somewhere. So far, so good. Let's take a look where they are going. Good, we're going to engage that pack first. They do have pretty solid cover, I must say. And we gotta get away from these guys. It's just too dangerous to have both packs roaming at the same time yeah unfortunately there's no really good position to get us fully away from them mostly everything here can be spotted out right now that's too long yeah, we're being pincered. Clever advent tactics. I give that to them. Treble in this position would still see the sector, which is a no-go. Can't let that happen. But from down here, we would be able to at least take an overwood shot if needed. We're continuing to overwatch. Those guys will eventually start moving into our direction, maybe even upstairs. Super high tension now. Of course, of course, he's still in range. Cannot move without being discovered we gotta hope that we're not pulling both of them well hope's not getting you anywhere so that has just triggered both of the packs now that is now going to be a real problem Although we have hit all of uh, the overwatch shots, which is fantastic, good job. We're in a world of pain here. Good, so what's the deal? 
Let's move into solid cover. This here is unfortunately not flanking, but the second best thing. Pretty solid damage. It's only a 50% chance to fully kill him. <clears throat> In terms of flashbang grenade, that'll probably take care of. Well, that would all, almost take care of all of uh, them. Oops, the um, sector, however. Should just stay where he is. So if we were to use a grenade, can we place it in an intelligent manner? That would not hit our own soldiers on top of it. The grenade is a hundred percent kill against the guy upstairs. But it's also valuable to keep it, maybe for later cover removal. We gotta risk it. I really don't like taking chances here. It's a good chance to kill him. Yeah. Good, XQ6 could move, theoretically could move a bit back and then throw the grenade. That'll still be good enough. And Hogbite could attack from in here, essentially killing the stun lancer. Yeah, let's try that. Unfortunately, not a kill. We're going to parry in the hopes of the stun lancer actually going for him. Moving, to designated position. Moving a little bit further away. And this here is a flashbang. At least preventing both of the stun lancers to come closer. There is the lance. They come for me. Probably um, a resurrection. No, it was a mind spin into a mind shield. Take it by over here. All right, very good. Talked about grenades and how they could be of value for us. Look at that. That'll be perfect. Nice little cover removal. I think we should go for it. Okay, so to optimize our action economy, we will reload. We'll afterwards remove the cover plus hit this guy. Let's maybe, first of all, get rid of the stun lancer here. Perfect. We're now going to lose some of the crates here. Can't really do anything about it. We're still busy with simply surviving at this point.
and the age-old question between taking the high ground and reducing the cover versus being more aggressive still comes up i think we're going to take lower cover stun lances are super dangerous so i'll seal this part here which means stun lancer can't just get up here let's soften him up a bit more very nice and that means hogbite can essentially kill him plus go for a rent now he is in a bit of a pickle <clears throat> i'm not going to lie because the sector here could go for a shot however there are so many corpses around that i'm actually hoping the sector will just uh, reincarnate one of the corpses and be a good boy as for the sun lancer let's hope that he is just going to take the bait and lance into a parry okay at least that worked out we can kill him next turn so we should be fine and there is the lancing into a parry perfect the ai was predictable and that's what i love about it all right. Let's see. So, we want to get a bit closer to the crates, okay. which means you're going to see me moving into the open. I am anticipating to kill my stun monster. Making room for another soldier up here, if needed. This could be a kill. Very nice. It, matter of fact, is a kill. And this here is full uh, focus Hawkbite, who is just mowing through the enemies. Perfect. Good. We need to get crates. Haven't even gotten a single one yet. And thus, double movement. We're going to do another parry here. Crates are now marked for additional recovery. That does not surprise me at all. But since we have killed two packs so far, Good work. I am Red almost positive that we should be fine Red for now. No reason to rush too much, which is why you see me basically also having uh, using time to kind of recover, get everybody in a solid position. Uh, more crates over here. I want to be careful. We're going to reload for Raul. Uh, Raul. I'm going to lose that crate, but it is fine. There's probably only one more pack around, and I would like to carefully approach them. Firebrand is on deck for recovery. Keep marking those crates, Menace One Five. So far, we've done a pretty decent job in marking all of the crates and defending, uh, defeating the enemies. Let's make sure that we're not getting sloppy with the last pack, shall we? Blue moves for everyone. Hogbite included. Okay, cool. I would like to reload here and yeah let's just overwatch for now no need to immediately get the crate it is not marked matter of fact it is advantageous to not get it 
so uh, that there's a higher chance that it will get marked next. Probably not going to get this crate over here. I'm on the move. Excuse six is marking the supplies. Moving, the designated coordinates. Moving in further. And there's our last pack. Alright. Okay, okay, okay. Well, we might as well even get the crate. Let's see. Okay, so could we reach anyone with a grenade? We could at least get the sector. We cannot, no, we cannot fully get um, a flanking shot on either of them. We are being flanked though from this direction, so can't stay here. Let's maybe start with using the grenade. The problem that I'm seeing is I really would like to go for uh, for the stun lances. Get ready for a surprise. But it might not be the best idea. Good, we got a stock here. So that on the other hand will give us at least one point of damage, which is enough to get him into leather range. So like I said, the stock kind of changes the dynamics of the game just a tiny bit. Travel moves up. Nice little shot position there, but we're going... Unless they leave us no choice, we should try to avoid damaging the crates if we want to bring home anything useful. Yeah, we will probably need to get into a better spot. Can't just stand in the open, that's not gonna work. Fortunately, all of the spots here are pretty much in the open as well. There we go, that's a kill. The problem with the Lancer is he will charge if I'm not preventing it from happening. Can't kill him though. Might as well take the non flanked position. And for Hawk Bite. It's a tough choice, guys. Let's go for parry. My argument is the following. There is still a corpse, so mind spin and um, reincarnation are two great options for the sector that they love to do. Uh, I was wrong. It really doesn't change anything because if I would have moved away, Stun Lancer would have still uh, moved into our direction and tried to kill us. Alright, moving to here so that we can mark the crate if necessary. Let's get the Stun Lancer. Very nice damage. True Rebel. Same deal. Going for potential crates, uh, uh, crate pickups. And we're going to kill that sector. Beautiful. And that is even it. Cool. With a little bit of luck, we even managed to go through that flawlessly. Uh, we only took 
one chance where we could have taken damage, which was that one stun lance at the uh, at the end. But Hogbite, just like a pro, just like a pro, he carried it. All right, and we're landing. Very nice mission. I think we even got eight or nine crates. That was, in hindsight, pretty damn good. Hogbite did not get a promotion, but he continues to rack up the kills. I love it. Almost 100 supplies, that's fantastic. Enough Alarium to get Psionics started. Uh, the Alloys are enough to get uh, the Power Armor started, so that's good as well. Superior Repeater, oh my gosh, that is great. And Superior Quality, oh, that is fantastic as well. That is fantastic as well. Three Alarium Cores, holy shit. That is pretty good. Let's take a look. Uh, we don't have a GTS yet, but the three extra hit points for Hogbite could be pretty damn good. The superior repeater on one of the smaller guns is also not bad because um, it will allow you to kill uh, with 15% of, uh, of the time and that is fantastic. Kind of makes it irrelevant how much damage your gun deals if it just kills often enough. Good, we got a faction hero that we don't really need, but with a faction hero we'll get resistance orders and that's exactly what we wanted. Resistance orders are helpful, just a little bonuses that we get here and there. So maybe making contact with all three of the factions at the beginning might not be the worst idea. Let's take a look what we've got. Uh, plus one resistance contact is good. Excavation, ooh, that is fantastic. I like it. I like it. That is an absolute monster. Good. What else do we have? We can locate a faction, but that would not be good enough. We can increase combat intelligence. Unfortunately, we can't use Hogbite for that. We can get more intel. Yeah. More income. Could go for increased faction influence. But that would all mean we cannot use Hogbite on our missions. So we we'll probably just need to go with something where Hogbite is not needed. Damn it. One of the biggest problems here is to even get onto a mission. Okay, so this one here works. Form a soldier bond and someone gets plus 10 dodge. That's not bad. It's almost worth doing that with Hogbind. If I was to take, for instance, Roby here and put him on the mission together with Hogbind, then um, both would be a team from the get-go. And I could put Roby into the PsyOps uh, training afterwards. The only problem is I must make sure that he can, uh, that he's not getting a promotion. Hmm. Hmm. No, I don't, I will not take that risk. Let's instead just go for 42 Intel. That's not bad either. Doesn't matter if either of them gets wounded. And let's begin that operations. Good, two more days until the laboratory, which is fantastic. And the laboratory will then also speed up our research. Oh, finally, finally, finally. Good, first things first, let's directly upgrade the laboratory. We're now at 15 out of 17 uh, energy. And look at that, we can put two scientists in it. That's the beauty of a laboratory rush. Magnetic weapons are now down to 15 days. Uh, it had been 21 beforehand. So we're really making 
way more progress. We're effectively having five scientists now, two plus one for the laboratory plus two for is uh, for that additional kind of boost because we stationed the scientists uh, scientists that are there. We're on top of it, continuing to excavate. And in terms of build order, it might be worthwhile to go for power next and switch the resistance order from power to faster excavation. Uh, that's probably a good idea. Commander, you should establish contact with the Good, very good. So we got 100 more income, which is awesome. It's exactly what we want. And now the question is, do we want more supplies or do we want more contacts? And I would say we're going for more contacts. It takes another six to eight days, but it will give us one more option when we're having resistance missions, because if you control m multiple territories, um, then you get an additional option for re uh, for the resistance mission. Okay, we got to deal with those sooner or later as well. For now, we're fine. But yeah, having three instead of only one option will help us big time to uh, to just deal with the dark events. And there is yet another mission. Okay. Oh no, it's month end. My bad. So, permanently ro lowering XCOM's income. That is not good. Let's see what else. Chosen double staff effort um, to hunt down. Yeah, that is not a problem. Permanently adding armor it might be an issue. We don't know the hidden event. So let's increase the excavation speed. That is fantastic. It's just so good. Might as well want to upgrade our resistance ring soon so that we get another order. That additional power isn't bad. So, yeah, as you can see now, it's only four more days until this is being excavated. And with excavation, we're going to get more resources. And with more resources, we can then also build more. So that's beautiful. I like it. Let's continue making contact. Ooh, look at that. Gather survivors for, from an abandoned city. Uh, so those will be that will be a heavy lost mission, and we get an engineer, a lot of intel, and unfortunately two um, soldiers that we cannot use. However, however, since we can free them in this mission, I can actually play them in this mission, so that will not uh, contradict the actual challenge. So for a very short time, we will be having a sharpshooter and a specialist on this mission. I'm looking forward for, to it. Uh, that looks like an awesome mission. I'm already excited about it. And it's definitely a doable mission. That's what excites me even more. And I absolutely love that Lost. So win-win-win. Um, Anyways, this brings us to the end of today's uh, video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed our content, hey, consider to just subscribe and or like and comment down below you know that that is what the youtube algorithm wants to see and if you enjoy it might as well just click and comment thank you and have a great evening bye bye